to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and... Conferences like these are intended to equip us with the truths that help us to live effective Christian lives. This is the first thing we need to understand. Our spiritual efficiency is the first part of call. Are we together? No matter what you discuss in a conference, it does not matter the theme of the conference, whether it is a crusade, whether it is a prosperity conference, whether it's some kind of believers gathering, it does not matter the caption. If there is the absence of the communication of truths that make for the spiritual efficiency of the believer, that conference did not capture everything. So, in order of priority, conferences like this should be platforms where we are exposed to the truths that help us to live effective Christian lives. Number two, conferences like this should allow for access it helps us to access the empowerment to fan the flames of evangelism and the maturity of believers within that territory. You must take note of this. The second goal of apostolic and prophetic conferences such as these is to fan the flames of evangelism and to fan the flames of the maturity of the saints through transformation. That means whatever happens in this conference should equip and empower us that means at the end of this conference if we are to rate this conference as successful we do not rate it using the indices of crowds alone or the indices of the presence of an anointed man no we will have to check for the indices of the efficiency in evangelism and soul winning after the conference is done to what end does this conference contribute to souls coming to Jesus. I don't care what is said in the conference. If it does not translate to perpetual and in, in increment, a harvest of souls, then that conference did not do much. On one hand, evangelism. On another hand, the maturity of the saints within that territory. Hallelujah. Yes. Usually in conferences like this, at least half of the people that attend the conferences are already believers or pastors or people who have already attained a level of stature in the spirit. So they are supposed to be empowered. There should be the effect of a, a heightened manifestation of soul winning and then maturity of believers. It means that without apostolic conferences like this, the rate of growth and maturity of believers within a territory will be very slow. Not because there are absence of pastors. But you see, according to Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible speaking about the fivefold. It says, when he led captivity captive, he gave gifts to men. The gifts are not talents. The gifts are men. He gave men to men. And the assignment of those men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, is to equip the saints to perfect to mature the saints hallelujah you can know the absence of a true apostolic and prophetic by apostolic i don't just mean the name apostle i hope you understand an apostolic ministry has nothing to do with the title of apostle it has to do with the ministry of one who is sent who represents the purposes of god across a territory so you know the presence of the apostolic and prophetic spirit within a territory by the level of incremental maturity of the believers within that territory that means if we take a random assessment 
of Christians across several churches, regardless of religious biases or prejudices, we should be able to ascertain the presence of a true apostolic and prophetic spirit by the level of spiritual enlightenment that the average believer with that, within that territory carries. It says, I will give you pastors according to my heart, Jeremiah 3.15, and they will feed you with wisdom and knowledge. Are we together? So conferences like this, in addition to helping our personal spiritual lives, they help to fan the flames of evangelism. Please look at me. Let me tell you this. No matter how effective we are as men of God, the indices to measure the excellence of a man of God's ministry in order of priority is how much souls come to the kingdom through your life. I don't care whether you are a pastor, a missionary, an evangelist, whatever you are, we need to see the index of souls is a very potent biblical index as soon as the holy ghost came upon the church the first sign of his presence was the harvest of souls not miracles souls three thousand people announce his arrival are we together so when the holy ghost came on one hand he now empowered the apostles who go around doing the work but the effect of his presence to the world was a harvest of 3,000 people. Acts chapter 2. They were caught to the heart and said, Men and brethren, what do we do? And Peter said, Repent. Are we together? Yes. And he says, For this promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, as many as are far off, even those who the Lord will call. So we must be able to, through conferences like this, fan the flames of evangelism and the maturity of the saints number three the third assignment of conferences like this within a territory is to strengthen the hands of the spiritual voices within that territory to strengthen the hands of the spiritual voices within that territory so as to effectively continue the work of the ministry in love in unity and power the third assignment of conferences like this targets the spiritual voices the men and the women of God within the territory to strengthen the hands of the spiritual voices within that territory so as to effectively continue the work of the ministry in love in unity and in power if you want to help the men of God within a territory to be more effective in the work of the ministry, these three dimensions must be captured. Love, unity, and power. Are we together? And then finally, in an apostolic and prophetic conference like this, what do we expect? The Lord would usually use conferences like this to help God's people and then indeed the territory concern to experience the liberating power of the spirit through miracles, signs and wonders. Every territory and every individual within a territory should not be the same after conferences like this. A true apostolic conference does not just stop at impacting those who came. The true spirit of the apostolic and the prophetic speaks even to the gates of the city. It cannot stop just at the point of convergence. So we expect to, in a greater way, experience the liberating power of the spirit. That means the sick should be healed. That means the oppressed should be delivered. That means lives that have been downcast according to Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, the, the Messianic prophecy says, for he hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, he hath to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to deliver them who are in prison, and to declare the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God. Is that true? The Bible says to give them beauty for ashes, joy 
for the spirit of heaviness you know for the uh, for the garment praise for the the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified that means we must experience the liberating power of the spirit so this is our checklist so that at the end of this conference we don't just say a great man of god came we check the success of that conference with respect to this are we together yes that number one did my spiritual life did i gain through the truths and the mysteries that were dispensed did i gain truths that will now help me as a man of god as an individual as a family man to experience efficiency in my spiritual life if so that conference was a success number two was there an opportunity within that conference i'm trying to read number two verbatim to fan the flames of evangelism and the flames of the maturity of the saints that means by this time next year if christ tarries the version of you who comes for next year's conference should be a grown version it shouldn't be this one it says i came to you and i could not i only had to serve you milk i could not serve you anything because you were still babes that means i came the last time and you people wasted my effort paul was saying now i came to bring something deeper matters of the spirit and i found out that you were still at that level so i had to resort to the things we were discussing there is no point going further in spiritual things until there is maturity the evidence of maturity and growth in the life of the hearers otherwise advancement in revelation is a waste are we together when a mother sees a child growing she knows that it is time to start weaning that child from breast milk and she will start introducing solids is that true until she totally disengages the child from breast milk but if that child is not growing is pale and sick even if it's past time to be weaned from breast milk she may still be forced to continue because of the condition of lack of growth that means there are some of you you have not justified the many conferences you have attended with your growth with, relative to the conferences you have attended some things should not be in your life again and some things should have arrived your life by now even if what was coming used road transport it should have arrived by now Whether you travel by road, you travel by air, you travel by train, there is an allowable time we give you to arrive. If you travel by road and after one, two days you don't arrive, we can still give excuses. Maybe something happened. But after one week, we know you were either kidnapped or you didn't even start the journey at all. Or you stopped on the way. Is that true? But if we see you entering a plane, a plane determines the quality of the vehicle that was helping you to be transported. If you get into a plane and after three hours we don't find you, we become impatient, justifiably so, because the quality of the vehicle that carried you should not allow you to delay for that long. There are many of you who have sat down under superior spiritual voices and yet your growth does not justify the level of the mysteries that were taught you. Are we together but by all means you must make up your mind that after this conference it is not this version of me that came that will go back now. something must happen to my spiritual understanding something must happen to my stamina and my stature in the spirit something must happen to the the operation of the spirit within me something must happen to my character something must happen to my understanding spiritually if you are in agreement in one minute i'd like you to pray these four things lord they must happen in my life i open up my spirit someone is praying so that we can receive from this conference maximally outside make sure you are praying wherever you are the spirit of god is with you and for those who are following online, make sure that you are praying. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Go ahead and pray. I obtain grace in the name of Jesus that through this conference, my spiritual experience, evidently growing, evidently growing, evidently growing, 
evidently growing growing in faith growing in love growing in understanding that the spiritual limitations of yesterday can no longer survive the power of light that is coming to my spirit now pray not only the altar of prayer the altar of evangelism let it be fan to flame that i will incorporate within my spiritual experience the burden of the spirit that which is the emphasis of god for the season god's emphasis must become my emphasis that a conference like this will prune my desires prune my appetites prune everything within my life that I will stand perfect and entire in the will of God for the season. You are a man of God here, pray that in the name of Jesus, my hands will be strengthened. He said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. So we have an assignment to strengthen the brethren. You can strengthen a man of God who is getting weak. You can strengthen someone that ministry is not working. Maybe there is a pastor. Maybe there is a prayer group. Someone about to give up spiritually. Now this conference was designed to refire your spirit. To let you know that you cannot give up having worked with God for 10 years, for 15 years. Pray that the limitations that stop you from enjoying a rich spiritual experience it must give way infirmities yokes curses orchestrations of darkness impediments to your growth and your excelling hallelujah Now that we're on the same page, I can begin to teach now. So that I don't waste your time and we don't waste the time. You see, destiny is a function of time. Whatever you submit your time to, you are submitting a part of your life to. It will be a total waste of time. In fact, it will be seen and evil. If these two days here is just full of galore and jamboree and a total waste of your time. No. You have made people have traveled from all over to be here the greatest honor that can be given to your sacrifice of being here inside and outside is a sound exegesis of doctrine that produces maturity and stature by the time you are walking out of that door you walk out complete entire with spiritual intelligence backed up with the grace to defend what you know hallelujah Let's get to the word now. Help us, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. First hmm. Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. Let's begin to discuss our contemplations. First Chronicles 12. Okay, it's not projected. I don't have a screen here. I have to make do. So please forgive me when I have to pull up um, 1 Chronicles 12 and 32 and of the children of Issachar which were men that had understanding of the time he says to know what Israel ought to do the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command the Bible speaks of this tribe of Issachar and he said among the many things that were commended or commendable about these people was that for some reason they were able to develop a spiritual strategy that would help them understand or discern the times and the bible says by reason of that advantage they secured a position among their brethren of dominion 
that their brethren were at their command at their command meant that until they moved the rest could not move because they stood in confusion everyone was confused but that this group of people for some reason were able to secure a system of drawing through intelligence the intention of the spirit per time per season and per dispensation and the bible lets us know that there was an implication upon their lives by reason of assuming that state they had dominion they were at the command their brethren were at their command we live in very troubling times and all over the world right now from post pandemic um, many nations of Africa, many nations across the world, Europe, the US, the Caribbeans, Asia, and even down home here, there's confusion in various regards, politically speaking, economically speaking, and, and so on and so forth. And it looks like believers are confused, men of God are confused. What is God saying? What direction do we move in? You know and what happens most times is because many believers have not trained themselves to build their relationship with the holy spirit structurally and understand how to navigate through seasons most people are at a loss and so they have to wait until whoever leads leads and your prayer is that the person leading is leading aright. the reason why error spreads very quickly is because discernment is very little so whoever sets the pace even in error the damage will be so much before someone realizes and says no something needs to be checked so the bible says the sons of issachar that they had an understanding of the times are we together and they knew what israel ought to do very very important this means that there is an approach and a strategy for every season the strategy and the approach for one season may not suffice for another season is that true for the bible to say that they were able to discern the times then the the knowledge of the times informed them of what strategy and what template to use for instance when it is rainy season for a farmer you agree with me that there is a strategy you must employ is that true that takes advantage of the season the moment you see heavy clouds and rain number one you may bring your bucket and keep it permanently outside because you expect rain to come so you are maximizing you are creating a strategy that helps you maximize the season number two the presence of the rain already saves you the burden of looking for water is that true so very quickly the ridges begin whether subsistence farming or industrial farming you make sure that you make ridges and now plant your seeds when you plant your seeds and fertilize them you can go to bed knowing that you have aligned with the season and it is an advantage now you can still farm during dry season but you must invent another strategy that simulates rainy season in dry season you have to bring forth an irrigation mechanism so that the farm will still feel it is still under rainy season and grow like it will grow for rainy season but the burden and the treasure and the, the effort that you will put in dry season is not the same as it will be in rainy season so the bible says that the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the time it means that every season god opens us up to spiritually speaking there are many treasures from heaven that are released in the midst of the chaos and those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear they can begin to develop by the spirit and the word the strategies that make for survival the strategies that make for thriving look at me please man of God the season that we are in now doing ministry as you have always done you will be surprised that you will suffer in ministry as if God did not call you and it's not backsliding it is just lack of discernment when they got to the Red Sea the strategy for victory was the rod but when they got to jericho the strategy was no longer the rod if they had used the rod they would be disappointed just because something worked yesterday 
does not guarantee that it will work today. You have to be in alignment with the spirit to number one, discern the season. And then number two, to be able to receive the strategy. That's why you find out that there are people with uncanny mastery who can navigate and thrive through seasons. It's not because they are special in themselves. It is simply because they have mastered the art. They have tapped into the wisdom and the grace that was upon the sons of Issachar to know what to do per season. There are business people who have discerned seasons. And even in business, there are times where one product can just sell for five years and whoever plunges into it within that five years can be a billionaire. After that five years, whoever comes in late, the Bible says when the angel came and stirred the water, it didn't announce his coming. You just see the water being stirred. So you have to invent a formula to know. The first person who jumped in, that means even if you are sincere and you took action, once you are the second, you will not be blessed. Please follow closely. We have a very serious, we are dealing with something very deep in the spirit tonight. Most believers do not know how to discern seasons. And the reason is because we copy and we copy blindly. We have ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Something can work and in 24 hours its validity can expire. And unfortunately, most people will plunge into those formulas very late in the 60s and the 70s the church growth formula was that was when they brought the concept of tent meetings and the rest there was no internet there was no nothing and those who tapped into it were mightily used by god and they excelled but eventually things started changing and many of our fathers received the blueprint given to them and they started campgrounds and they started conventions are we together most people never knew that the internet a time will come when the internet will be able to capture the gospel but a few people discerned early and tapped into that now there are many people who believe it will remain like that forever it will be lack of wisdom to believe that it will remain like that forever no those in the then world would never have believed that there would be any kind of metamorphosis who would have believed that if you were a professional typist you would be hungry today if you were a professional typist in 1990, you were a noble person, but not in today's world. So can you tell me what the next 10 years will be? Or do you believe the world today will still be the, the world of 10 years? I'm not talking in terms of technology. Once upon a time, you could easily give out tracts and do one-on-one -on -one evangelism. You could just stand today if you stand near somebody's wife or somebody's child to preach jesus christ they can snap you immediately and by the next day you are in prison because they can say that's how terrorists behave so what then is the strategy no one that jesus said go ye into all the world he told you what to do to go he told you where into the world he told you what to do preach but he never told you how to do it he left the strategy flexible because it, the strategy must be defined per season, per generation, per dispensation. Are we learning? So the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the time. I remember about a decade ago or so, the Lord opened my eyes and the Lord revealed to me how the gospel will be advanced through the internet within the next decade or so and I remember God giving me an instruction that time it, there were audios and he said take those audios and put them in the internet my angel will take it across the world I will bless people with it and I will announce you at that time if you wanted your messages to be heard you have to package it in cassette or CD you put it on the internet you are wasting your time and yet this was God seen with his all seeing eye because I'm saying this because there are some of you you came to this conference to receive the blueprint of the next 10 years because the days that are coming many will fall like a pack of cards they will not fall because they are sinners uh -uh. they will fall because that extra was not carried there were 10 virgins they were all virgins so it was not the issue of being a sinner 
the advantage of the five is that they said perhaps something changes let's make arrangement for it are we learning already so the bible tells us that for every season there is a strategy in revelations chapter 2 and verse 29 Jesus was speaking to John when he was caught up in the Isle of Patmos to the third heavens. And he says, he that hath an ear. Please give us KJV media. Let's work with KJV all through. It says, he that hath an ear. Thank you. Let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Look at me, please. There is what God is saying to everybody. But what there is what God is saying to believers. You can hear what he's telling everybody. The Bible tells us that the trees and the seas, they all sing his praises. God can speak. The voice of God upon the waters is mighty. You can hear what God is saying to everybody. But have you heard what the Spirit is saying to the churches? He that hath an ear. That means not everybody has that kind of ear. If everybody has that kind of ear, you will not need to say he that hath. Are we together? He that hath a visa card, let him come and use this ATM. So if you have a master card or any other card, they are wonderful cards, but not applicable for that instruction. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Hallelujah. It is very, very important for us to understand what God is saying. In Matthew chapter 24, from verse 37 to 39, Jesus was speaking about the end of the age and he made a very interesting statement that would serve as a compass for us as we explore how to thrive and excel in today's world in light of all the happenings from a spiritual perspective. Jesus was speaking, Matthew 24 from verse 37. Do we have it? Matthew 24, 37. Let me just pull it up here so that we'll save time. Matthew 24 and verse 37 hallelujah all right it says but as but as the days of noah were so shall also be the coming of the son of man keep that scripture there so he already tells you that a clue to how you will survive is already captured for you in the bible that when you see the end of the time one of the figure that you should study is the man Noah and the survival strategies of his time. Are we together? Because he says that the moment the end of time is coming, the situation on earth will parallel something that had happened before. The things that are written are for time. They are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. What happened in the days of Noah? Reading to 39. If we are still together, say amen. amen. Verse 38 now, please. It says, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Keep that scripture there. That means there were two kinds of activities that were happening in the days of Noah. I'm interpreting this for you now. There were physical activities that gratified the flesh. But there were spiritual activities that were preparing for the days that were coming. Are you getting me now? He's not just talking about eating and drinking. He's saying in the days of Noah, people separated themselves into two categories. I'm praying that the eyes of your spirit will be open please you need to listen to this that means you know that the signs of the end times one of the major signs is that there will be a division on earth there will be people who are highly carnal their their pursuit will be my food and pleasure this is what he meant and then there will be a select group of people who will be in alignment to what god is saying he says the moment you begin to see that formation a flood is coming are you listening now? A flood is coming. Verse 39. They says, and they knew not 
until the flood came and took them all away so shall the coming of the son of man be that there is a flood like a tsunami it came in the days of noah people were eating and drinking it's just a prophetic expression to mean they were involved in physical activities whose scope was only satisfying the flesh nothing spiritual they were ignorant they could not read the writings on the wall but there was a man called noah please give us genesis chapter 6 and verse 1 begin to pray in the spirit if you can in one minute hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father he is seated on the throne hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father you are seated on the throne are you praying hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father seated on the throne hallelujah listen when jesus was about to die he told them he said if you want to understand the dynamics of my death i will give you one sign the sign of jonah that means make reference to jonah's story and it will give you a picture of what is about to happen they didn't understand what is the sign of jonah that jonah was in the belly of the fish what does that mean it was a parallel to what was happening that jesus like jonah would go to hades the place of the dead and there complete the process of redemption and after three days like the fish could not hold jonah so death could not hold him and it released him that was a sign of jonah now he's saying if you want to study and have intelligence about the the happenings that relate to the end of the age he says do not miss it don't find yourself studying all kinds of things go to something that happened on earth the story of noah was not a parable it actually happened he says study it again because a similitude of it is coming and sign number one is that there was a separation between men those who were carnally minded all their concern was what to eat and the pleasure that came from activities like marriage and the rest he was not saying eating and marrying is wrong it was only a picture to exemplify pleasure because the blessings of marriage appeals to the flesh the blessings of food appeals to the belly so it was a prophetic message that people were focusing on that which appeals to the flesh but there was a group of people noah his wife their sons and their wives now let's study noah just the first 10 verses genesis chapter 6 is someone learning already for someone listen as you are listening to me it's not just what i'm teaching you are hearing there is a connection a transfer of the spirit of revelation that you will open the word of god and your eyes you will begin to see beyond just memory verses listen revelation look up please revelation is a combination of knowledge and understanding you only have revelation when you have knowledge and understanding knowledge is awareness of the presence of that truth but understanding is drawing out the mystery from that truth are we together now i pray paul was praying he says that the eyes of your understanding be flooded with light and it came to pass please look up when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them number two the sons of god saw that the daughters of men were fair an ancient word for beautiful and they took them wives of all which they chose and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man 
for that he is also flesh his day shall be 120 years verse 4 there were giants in those days upon the earth and also after that when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bear children unto them I don't want to take you through all that story the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown if I keep this scripture here we'll spend a vigil till morning because this thing you see there is a parallel of it in today's world hallelujah the Bible lets us know that the fight will be between the woman and her seed and the serpent and his seed it's not the serpent alone there is a generation of the serpent when Jesus came and looked at the Pharisees he said you are of your father the devil his will shall you do himself he was a murderer from the beginning that means there is a generation that was birthed as a result of an aberration between the physical and the spirit realm the birth of Jesus shows us that a spirit can participate in the fatherhood of a human flesh it is a man can be physical or spiritual it is the woman that must be flesh the man must not be flesh it's in your Bible how did Jesus arrive so let's just let's just leave that one because what we're dealing with is something else and God saw watch this now God saw that the wickedness of man was great does that look like what is happening in the world now there are two things that happened then that are happening now number one multiplication there is no time in human history where we have more people right now the globalists are on an agenda to mass depopulate people in the earth because there are even con resources there's constraint of resources constraint of land and so on and so forth as in the days of noah the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually what did God do verse 6 and it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth and it grieved him to, at his heart verse 7 the Bible says the Lord said I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that I made him verse 8 but Noah hmm. but southeast but any good state but Noah found grace please sit down now it's really now that our teaching is going to start but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord verse 9 now these are the generations of Noah what made Noah find grace in the eyes of the Lord Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation and Noah walked with God uh, is someone learning already remember that the pattern given to us if we are to borrow the wisdom of Issachar that means we have to discern what time it is now so that we know what strategy to draw from scripture if you are driving in the afternoon and you have a touch light on your hand it's a wrong strategy for the time the light already saves you that trouble if you are driving in the night with all your lights off it's a wrong strategy for the night is that true you don't own the light of your phone and move around in the day because the season already comes with an advantage of light but when it is it does not mean you will throw your touch light you will save it when you see it get when you see it getting dark you now know that i have to change strategy if it is raining you don't wear a singlet and a little short and then start strolling outside when it is raining and it is cold the weather informs you of what strategy to use you will get a jacket are we together when you see someone in a hot blazing sun when other people are sweating and even you know flying their shirts and 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 giving themselves a, 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 you know fanning themselves and you see somebody with a thick jacket maybe a suit and a thick jacket like a a winter coat on it that person is either sick or mad is that true 
listen I can know your discernment as I look at your approach has it changed since pre-covid has it changed since post-covid what spiritual strategy have you employed now because the strategy that most people are employed for their spiritual growth years ago may not easily work again now for instance when you were a student you didn't have children you didn't have a wife you didn't have responsibilities so you could pray for eight hours now that you are working in a, 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 a job that sometimes calls you on sunday the seasons have changed but like Issachar have you developed the strategy that maintains your fire because the template you use on campus can no longer suffice in the pre that is why those who escape campus life and are on fire after 10 years you see them and say what happened they were trying to use that template no more free food maybe daddy has gone to be with the Lord at that time you didn't have a job at that time there was break at that time you were not paying the school fees of anybody you must adopt a new template when you began to serve God you were a young man Nigeria was not so evil you could do night vigil every day but now there is unrest have you developed the strategy by the spirit to still be on fire if there was lockdown lockdown was a message that church discern a new strategy a season has come and it has changed many believers after three months of lockdown they backslided many things went down because the only way they know to grow is to get up and move to a place and the sons of Issachar men who had an understanding of the times they knew what Israel ought to do is God helping someone It was easy to give people posters and billboards and say come to my church on Sunday and right now you give people those things and they look at you and you find out that your money is going and the souls that should come is not commensurate to what is happening and you are wondering Lord what is the strategy every time Jesus comes into a life one of the first things he does is to disrupt status quo The man was used to rolling and falling but Jesus told him there is still another way you can be healed without entering the water if you look at me you can still leave because that water was a symbol of me stand up and walk so don't be surprised this is why you have to be careful you will see people not doing what you know to do and yet they will get fearful results that will surprise you by what strategy is this happening now that was what annoyed the scribes and the Pharisees because they knew there was a strategy they had and if you are to seek God this is the only way now Jesus came who is this miracle worker who is not behaving like us and yet he seems to be a man approved of God that was the same problem the early church had with Paul too where is this guy coming from he was not with Jesus at the beginning what gave him the credential to become an apostle when he was not part of us they didn't know that Jesus had appeared to him too are we together now yes. so the Bible says let's finish up that scripture Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and Noah walked with God let's look at verse 10 and the Bible says Noah beget Shem, Ham and Japheth let's read on the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence uh-huh it says and God looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth next verse and God said to Noah the end of all flesh is come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold I will destroy the earth next verse make thee an ark of gopher wood we'll just keep this verse if we can't do it today we'll get into it tomorrow now God is revealing to him the strategy he said Noah don't pray that I will not destroy the earth this one 
I, it's a written judgment I have made up my mind that I will the only thing you can do is your exemption and if you will walk with me I am going to reveal to you a strategy and he says the strategy will cost you it will not be free you are going to build an ark it will not come free for you that strategy will make for mockery that strategy you will be touring a path that has not been known before are you ready for the controversy that comes with receiving this new strategy are we together Noah found grace now please look up do you know there are many believers I tell you sincerely who at the current pace of their spiritual understanding will be victims of the seasons that are coming not because they are bad but simply because they are undiscerning they have not sustained the intelligence of the sons of Issachar to be able to discern the times. Are we together? Yes. Sufficient within scripture is the intelligence that guides us to navigate through seasons. The Bible says, when you see that the end of age is coming, study that man called Noah. That the earth will be a parallel to what happened. Number one, that when it is the end of time, there will be multiplication numerical multiplication there are arguably about i think eight seven point six billion people and counting on earth never has the earth had such people to that degree wickedness has multiplied like the days of noah but that then means the spirit is saying something to the church because he came to noah and he says destruction is imminent i am bringing judgment upon the earth however because i have found you have found favor in my sight it then means that conferences like this are proof of God's favor. They are a prophetic indication that God has looked upon a people and is ready to exempt them from the evil that will come in the times. Are we together now? When Jesus walked upon the earth, he began a mentorship session that we call theologically the Beatitudes. He began to teach them a new culture and a new approach to life. And he started contrasting two systems the roman government and their system their modus operandi and the kingdom system he started giving them a new orientation about how to function in the kingdom so he would say things like you are the light of the world you are the salt of the earth is that true and then he began to speak to them blessed are this and that you say this in your law but this is what i say and he allowed a q and a he allowed them the freedom and the liberty to ask him questions they ask him questions that range from things like marriage divorce death whatever fasting eating with unwashed hands and he was generous enough to answer the question sometimes he answered the crowd sometimes he left them with the parables and went and gave the explanations to the disciples but the Bible is generous enough to capture all the answers in this book for our learning are we together now I want to reveal to you in this conference what I believe from the authority of scripture and by the spirit of revelation the blueprint for survival for the days that are coming that any believer who does not subscribe to this pattern by the authority of scripture will not be efficient if you do not subscribe to this pattern that I'm revealing to you by the authority of scripture this is not a man's opinion it will be evil to come and give you an opinion it is risky to teach opinions at this time we must be discerning and intelligent enough you may have heard me say this in this kingdom it is written is greater than I saw it is written is greater than I heard it is written is greater than I dreamt for all of those expressions have not been tested and tried but the Word of God has been tried thoroughly are we together that means it is written can change what I saw it is written can change what I heard it is written can change what I dreamt about my security is not just in what I saw my security is not just what I I only believe what I heard if what I heard is consistent with what is written 
this is one of the platforms that will give you stamina and stability in the end times building a life and a ministry building your destiny around i saw the prophetic i heard revelation it will cost you casualties go and read your bible when old prophets made mistakes go and read your bible when sincere people missed it there were times that even paul said i speak as a man but that which is written it abides forever when jesus prayed and fasted and satan came he didn't say i am jesus he said it is written he defeated satan in in matthew chapter 4 using it is written it was only when he did it is written that he purchased redemption that from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain and that it is written cursed is every man that hangs upon a tree is that true that the blessings of Abraham justification by faith might come upon with the Gentiles to the end that we may receive the promise of the spirit by faith it was not just quoting it it was when he did it the actual dying the prophetic dying of the lamb of, of the lamb that was slain did not bring us salvation he had to die physically maybe this is a prophetic word for someone right now we are in a, a strong apostolic and prophetic generation and that is wonderful thank God for the lavish release of graces for the prophetic abilities to access the spirit you build your ministry around heavenly encounters encounters in hell encounters with the spirits of just men made perfect as powerful as that is it will not stand the test of time Jesus already was having angels yet when Satan came he didn't say did you not see Michael Satan who defeated you he said it is Is someone learning now so let me just give you this as the foundation we must return to respect the supremacy of the Word of God above and beyond any and all spiritual experiences regardless how flamboyant they are because Satan can appear as an angel of light so it was written so that it will not be changed John what you have seen now right so that it will not be changed because even if you are Moses Satan can come to fight your body so that he will put another spirit when Jacob held, held listen when Isaac held his son he said something is strange here the smell is the smell of Esau but the hand is the hand of Jacob that means even in the realm of re the revelation and the prophetic there can be error you are touching something else and yet what is happening to you is something else there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom them, there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a shoe will reign forever to your kingdom there'll be no end listen I don't boast to know everything but I've seen great people fall like a pack of cards at the instance of the error of the prophetic I have seen people fall like a pack of cards not not error from what was told them error by themselves did the Bible not even teach you that your own heart can deceive you is it not in the Bible you don't need any wrong prophet or wrong apostle your own heart by yourself unassisted by any external the heart of man by default unassisted outside of the mercy of God is wicked and deceitful above all things so your heart can tell you God said and later on when you grow you will find out God did not really say it was the hearing that your level taught but that which is written stands sure please listen when Solomon received the spirit of wisdom and understanding the first test watch this was two prostitutes who came to him is that true 
the Bible says there was a court case that stood before Solomon one of it was that they slept and one slept and killed her child and quietly exchanged it is that true that is deception now because both of them were sleeping sleep is something that is common to all men and while they slept someone exchanged it and they got up and this one said it is my child this one said it is my child now solomon was going to show the supremacy of the wisdom of god he would have said i am wise i know this will happen and just guess his way into error but watch this the moment solomon saw that situation he knew that the only way to discern the thoughts and the intent was to bring the sword which is the word of god he said bring me a sword the moment the knife arrived the truth came out immediately that that word that is sharper than two-edged sword the bible said it sustains the power to cut asunder even doctors cannot do any surgical procedure beyond the human flesh but the word of god can move past the realm of the flesh and discern people the times we are living in are the times where a kiss that should be a sign of love can be a symbol to the enemy this is the one destroy him you will need discernment beyond the realm of the senses judas comes to jesus and kisses him if you were to watch that scenario you go back and say judas what a loving disciple and yet that was a sign to the enemy this is the one who should die satan came the first time directly to jesus and jesus said it is written three times and he left for a season one of the synoptic accounts will say are we still together the next time he would come he did not come directly again he did not use evil he came through the compassion of a loving disciple i hope you know that satan can use what is good and fight you good and evil came from the same tree so it is within his liberty to use both evil and if he finds out that you are one who runs away from evil he will not use evil he will not use a lady to destroy you no he will not use liquor to destroy you he will use church he will use brethren watch this now so satan enters peter and peter does not even know that at that point he's under the influence of satan hear what satan says through peter paraphrasing jesus don't die you can't go to the cross we love you too much say compassion and jesus looked at him like paul looked at the damn cell in Acts 16 and says what you are saying is right but the influence behind it uh -uh. it is written that he must die because without the shedding of blood so the spirit of christ will not negate the word what spirit is this that is speaking so nicely and yet against that which is written many nice sermons will kill in the end time because they are nice but they are inconsistent with what is written please sit down so jesus looks at peter Peter was sincere he was not evil and Jesus looks at him and says get thee behind me Satan and Peter can imagine Peter saying what insult is this and he laughed he said Peter one day you will grow and you will understand what happened Satan has desired to sift you like wheat he says but I have prayed for you we're getting there shortly I have now given you a strategy that the moment you see deception rising in any territory i have given you the weapon to maintain your balance i have prayed for you that your faith fail not it says when you are converted use this same strategy anywhere you see deception in a territory teach them to pray because that in the place of prayer they will gain stability the next time satan would come he entered judas and unfortunately because the heart of judas was already i hope you know judas was not an evil man judas was a selfish man he did not intend to kill jesus he intended to make money out of jesus so that he would leave jesus to deal with them and say i i i fulfill my own part of the business i promise that i'll bring you face to face with him whatever happened between him and you is none of my business give me my money 
That was why when Jesus gave himself, he killed himself. He didn't plan for it to go that far. Be careful what you do with Jesus. You can love him. You can use him for money. You can use him for fame. You can use him wanting to sit at the right and the left side. Not because you love him, but you are using him to show that what you left was not failure after all. They did many things with Jesus. That is a sermon for another day. Just because Jesus is around you does not mean you will be blessed. It depends on what you do with him. Is God speaking to us? So, we are putting certain foundations in place. Foundation number one for survival is to respect and exalt the supremacy of the word of God above and beyond all spiritual experiences. Let me show you what the Bible has to say about the word of God. Galatians Colossians, I meant to say. I was just pulling up the scripture. Colossians 1.16. See what the Bible has to say about the word of God. How much the word of God has been exalted. Colossians 1 and verse 16. Colossians 1 and verse 16. I'm seeing the number 5. The spirit of revelation is coming on 5 people. I want you to help them. One of them is a lady who has been praying and fasting praying and fasting and asking the Lord five people I just saw that light resting upon you you may be a man of God you may be a woman of God but in the name of Jesus may you step into that dimension and that realm in the spirit for you will never be the same you are under the influence of the spirit in the name of Jesus spring up all wells let that well in the spirit be open God that commanded light to shine out of darkness is releasing this treasure even upon that earthen vessel you will access light illumination even by the Spirit the Bible says for by him him being the word remember please keep the scripture here when you read Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 it says God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past through his son through the prophets and you know who had in this last day spoken to us through his son whom he had appointed to be heir of all things so he spoke to us in time past primarily through the apostolic and the prophetic you know then there were no apostles but there were prophets who played that role and he says in these last days his emphasis in speaking to us is through his son the word whom he had appointed to be heir over all things now Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 it says for by him all things were made make reference to this John chapter 1 verse 1 and 3 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God are we together it says verse 2 the same was with God in the beginning and then verse 3 says all things how many things all things were made by him and it says without him was not anything made that means outside of his influence was not anything made that was made Hebrews 11 and verse 3 says through faith we understand we were not there but through faith we understand that the walls the aeons they were framed by the word of God so that the visible things you see that appear they are only children they were birthed from the invisible realm and that's by the word of God for by him were all things created that are in heaven look at the dominion the jurisdiction the jurisdiction of the authority of the word and the supremacy of the word the jurisdiction of the authority of the word is not only the earth realm it says that are in heaven that are in earth visible and invisible things whether there be thrones dominions principalities or powers it says all things were created by him 
and for him that means it is a risk when you exalt every other thing and every other spiritual experience above the word of God in the beginning was the word before prophecy was the word before miracles was the word it was the presence of the word that guaranteed the arrival of every other spiritual experience Enugu State listen to me regardless church regardless denomination southeast protect the sanctity and the supremacy of the word upon your altars and in your life the word of God must become the foundation for your Christian experience please listen to me no matter the charismatism and the flamboyancy of the display of power the prophetic and the apostolic I submit to you that you are increasing the margin of error and deception in your life to the degree to which you ignore the ministry of the word our altars must there must be um, repentance from using altars as a place of just stories and discussions exegesis of opinions we must return back to doctrine I will hopefully deal with that doctrine comes from the Latin word doctrina it means a communication of a set of truth and beliefs that turns a student to become something exact the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 it says they they submitted themselves to the Apostles doctrine and to prayer the breaking of bread and fellowship it was the formula that led to their maturity Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 when there was problem between the Grecian women fighting over food the disciples said set other people to manage this but we will give ourselves continually is that true we will give ourselves continually to the word man of God minimize administration and get back to the word believers minimize a lot of things and get back to the word ministry expansion can be manipulated by the devil to become the undoing of many people when jesus resurrected there was no time to celebrate his resurrection before the disciples he said let's get back to class in 50 days the holy ghost is coming but there are still other things i need to teach you the word must precede the spirit so he sat down with them for 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom afterwards he was ready to levitate to heaven wait 10 more days and the holy spirit will come the presence of the word will now show you the value of the spirit are we together so my first charge to us in discerning the times we must understand the power and the supremacy of the word above any and all spiritual experiences let me tell you this years ago i used to read about encounters supernatural encounters because of the way god dealt with me and because of the way god trained me i was given to a lot of encounters angelic encounters encounter with jesus encounter with the spirit of just men made perfect and i respected all those encounters and so on and so forth but then i began to study the life of many people who had encounters from asia around the world prominent among them were people like mary catherine baxter you know her books divine revelation series many other people but then I started noticing the progression of the decline of the purity of encounters as I studied books and studied materials by well-intentioned people a time came where for many people it became like a jamboree they were actually carried by spirits into realms that were not earth and so because the realms were not earth they called it heaven I hope you know that most of the error that is in the church today when you trace from the history it came to encounters that was why those who perpetuated those errors did it with conviction because they knew what they saw but they exalted I saw more than it is written they exalted I heard more than it is written now watch this even personalized spiritual dealings should not be exalted above encounters watch this God can study me as a man of God and based on the assignment he has given me to the nations God will put certain rules and restrictions to my life that are custom made for my spiritual efficiency and if I walk in keeping with it 
it will produce tremendous results so chances are excellent that in mentoring you I will pour into your life even my personalized dealings because that's the template that gave me my results except that because you honor my result you will start working in a template that was not built for your call because now my experience is certainly being exalted above what is written so for instance someone can be sick and I can pray on water or pray on a handkerchief or the Lord can give me an instruction like Smith Wigglesworth to punch the person and he gets healed that is a personalized dealing it is not a doctrine the condition for anything to be a doctrine is this there are three biblical conditions number one that thought or that expression must be captured in the Old Testament number two that thought or that expression must have been in the life of Jesus in his earth work number three that thought or expression must be captured in the experience of the early church the Apostles any thought that does not pass that test cannot be called doctrine albeit it may not be error but it may not be doctrine are we together for instance the Bible speaking about John the prophet who we call the Baptist he was filled with the spirit from his mother's womb is that true we know that that is rather an exception we cannot call it doctrine the doctrine of baptisms demand that the ministry of the Holy Spirit only comes after an encounter with the Son of God in order of priority this is the record that God had given us eternal lives away and he structured the administration of that life such that until you receive the Son then you can have that life when you have that life now you are qualified to receive of the Spirit Acts chapter 19 remember the believers Paul having passed through the upper coast he came and met certain believers and he said have you received the Holy Spirit since he believed they were believers they were disciples already they said no we've not even heard if there be any Holy Ghost and he says unto what baptism then were you baptized and they said the baptism of John now he began to educate them that the baptism of John was a baptism of repentance that they should believe on the one that means it was a prophetic adumbration of what would happen in experience to Jesus and now by extension to the believers when they believed he prayed for them baptized them in the name of the Lord and the Bible says that he laid hands on them and the Spirit of the Lord came upon them in Acts chapter 8 when you read the Bible says Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them from verse 5 he says the people in one accord they paid attention hearing and seeing the miracles that he did is that true for unclean spirits were casted out of people and those who were sick and plagued with palsies were healed the Bible says there was great joy in that city now the people were saved but they were not filled with the Holy Spirit so we see the protocol that it is encounter with the Son of God even though sponsored by the ministry of the Holy Spirit but that you must have that justification by faith that's what the Bible calls the blessing of Abraham the blessing of Abraham is not cars and houses it is justification by faith it now gives you room because Abraham believed God and it was credited unto him as righteousness so like Abraham we believe God and it is credited unto us as righteousness then we can receive the promise of the Spirit through faith that is always the protocol salvation and encounter with the ministry of the Holy Spirit the person and the office of the Spirit so if you look at John with that principle and excel in ministry for years if you are asking me the reason for my excelling I will tell you what my experiences were and tell you God gave me this instruction and a faithful mentee will go back and say truly whereas his own ministry will need 10 cars but because of your honor to working in my template you will limit what God wants to do are we together now but when you exalt it is written more than that experience the experience will benefit you but not to the detriment of your growth are we learning now many people today have deviated from the patterns given to them by God simply because of sincerity of followership they have not gained and understood the power and the supremacy of that which is written can I tell you the greatest of us any man is still a man this word you see is above and beyond most of the errors in the body of Christ 
they did it they largely did not come from individuals who wanted to take advantage of the body are we together the number one basis for the corruption of the prophetic respectfully speaking in many circles is because they focus on the charismatism of the prophetic and did not stabilize it with the integrity of the word and the intelligence of doctrine so let me give you an instance let's say for instance i stand here and god opens my eyes i hope we're still learning and god tells me to pray for uh, say reverend dan and his wife God can open my eyes now to see that maybe there is an attack coming on the woman of God. Let's, ex let's, let's, let's say for instance, this is their church. Now I saw correctly, but my approach to dispensing it has to be based on what the word of God says. The Bible says, rebuke not an elder in public. If I am sound in scripture, I will know that there is something I will say about that woman of God that will leave more trouble when I go. So now my prophetic is correct. But I pass it through the lens of the word of God for accurate. Are you getting the point now? This is what God must help us to do. There are many homes today, respectfully speaking, that have been broken. Not because the people are bad. But simply because they see in the realm of the spirit and they do not have the intelligence that scripture and doctrine brings. So in communicating what they saw, they find out that the more they reveal what they saw, the more trouble is coming upon people. And it ought not to be so. When your life is balanced by the word of God, please look at this. You will find out that you are able to build people holistically. You will enjoy prophetic and apostolic experiences and yet they will not derail you because the basis of your confidence is that which is written. The boundary of God's commitment to the believer is scripture. God cannot be committed to the believer outside the provisions that scripture allows. Because God himself limited himself to what to only the provisions of the word the Bible declares that he has exalted his word even above his office his reputation are we together that means before God steps in to act his action has to be justified by the truth of that which is written this is very powerful when you know this you will be able to act and deal in such a way that builds people holistically i'm saying this respectfully because there are many of us especially my generation and the younger generation we are we are because of the ministry of prayer and the word we are pressing into spiritual dimensions and coming in with experiences that largely we cannot explain and if we are not mentored accurately to understand the supremacy of the word a day will come christianity will become something else because we will not even know what we are doing again and you see no matter how wrong i am in my approach the moment i have results it is difficult to say something is wrong are we together is someone learning everybody say the word of god now our generation does not consider you to be very anointed if your ministry is on the sound exegesis and the communication of the word i agree that has put a lot of pressure consistent the believers are only built acts chapter 20 i believe and verse 32 it says i now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace are we still together which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified one more time please say the word of god now please look up you see many of our parents and respectfully speaking the generation of our fathers they may not have had the privilege of the lavish experience of the spirit that many of us have that is the truth but one thing they got right was the stability of the word 
some of our respectfully speaking just for the sake of description what we will call our orthodox circles we laugh at them today and say they don't pray in tongues they don't walk in the spirit but the stability of doctrine has kept them for many years and so we come as young people with charismatism and balloon success we are up three four months five months and the error of not being accurate and stable in scripture will now bring us down and we just fall like a pack of cards the first thing Noah heard that guaranteed his stability was the word of the Lord. Is someone learning? Yes. So we must return to the place of the word. The communication of doctrine in many circles today is seen as the activity of baby Christians. When we see power, people rolling and shouting and I'm prophesying, I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. You understand that by now you should know. There are many sincere men of God who are under pressure when they come and teach. If a man of God comes to take the mic like I'm doing now and teaches doctrine with accuracy and power, chances are excellent. He may not get the advantage of being invited anywhere. He may not be a celebrity on maybe social media. And so that pressure now leads a lot of people to say, you know what, this thing, I'm looking for what works. I have school fees to pay. My children, there are bills to pay this approach even though it seems to be what lasts it does not seem to be profiting me let me comfort someone already can i tell you many things will come and go but this word you see is what kept those who have led us to where we are now mm, it is true it is true it is true especially those of you who are called uniquely to the apostolic and the prophetic ministry please hear this do not be embarrassed to camp around the jurisdiction of scripture you will last for sure even when you don't trust yourself trust what you are standing on the bible calls it an anchor that keeps the soul there are kings now you will understand my song there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength hold on go and read through history and find out champions that came and shook the wall and still died some of them died and fell shamefully towards the end of their lives because as great as they were their foundation was not the word of god go and read respectfully speaking about god's generals let me tell you the truth compared to those guys we do not even qualify to be ushers today this we that we have been celebrated like this if we were then those days no we we'll have to sit down and learn and yet many of them even with the stability of the word many of them were shaken did you not read in your bible that two men built it was not the superstructure what it was built upon was what kept it to last the same rain the boisterous wind the vicissitudes of life it is easy to believe you are doing well until the challenges of life come and beat you left right and center please look at me what happens when what you saw and what you are seeing does not come to pass what happens when what you hear or what you were told does not come to pass what happens when your dream and your vision does not come to pass God already secured your stability with what is written so if I lie down right now and I have a dream and see myself dying I get up with the comfort of scripture knowing that it is written is greater than what I saw you see that now so I, listen listen I don't make an empty talk and say God forbid you say God forbid you will die like a chicken the basis of your confidence is not God forbid the realm of the spirit does not respect titles and status no it only respects what you are standing on 
if you ever believe that because of your tribe or status or whatever the devil and evil will not come near you you are lying for Satan come to me Jesus is speaking and yet he did not find anything why because he was full of the word the word respected what is written the word himself the logos of God who came from heaven walked in honor to and of what is written I'd like you to pray in one minute while you are seated and say Lord grant me the grace to exalt your word as the most supreme factor in my life especially in light of the times that we live in thank you for the prophetic grace you have given me but today I make a decision to exalt your word to exalt the stability of scripture and the stability of doctrine above and beyond any spiritual experience the experience does not have to be evil it does not have to be false but in order of supremacy and priority the word of God must gain that ascendance in your life in your church in your business in your prayer group in your apostolic and prophetic platform people are only mentored to stability through the sound exegesis of scripture the communication of doctrine more than the communication of experiences someone pray scripture in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah so if I ask you today what gives you confidence that you will still be here next week if you say Joshua Selman spoke over me you are only right if what I said submits to what is written did you hear what I said there are many people who believe a man of God more than they believe scripture and it is not I'm not being sarcastic listen carefully that will not stand it's like believing the best student in a class the best student in a class will still write exams this has been the basis of my life can I tell you the truth the only guarantee to my life is not eloquence it's not oratory it's not human connection it is the stability of scripture if you find what is written and with childlike faith you can stand man of God prophet apostle believers anything will beat down around the southeast but when the dust settles that house that has been built on the rock not built around the rock the house can be built around the rock but the house that is built on the rock that is the one that stands hallelujah the stability of scripture I believe my Bible I don't read the Bible just to look for sermons it is life to me in truth believe me I will give up ministry a thousand times this was what brought me here I would be stupid to throw it away because of the mundane benefits and blessings that come for someone God is speaking to you return to how you started with me that's what God is telling you you started with the word of God with honor now you are busy ministrations around Enugu not to be critical but you have to be careful ministry and administration and the uploads of men can distract you from learning and growing how shall a young man keep his way pure by meditating on the law of the Lord let me give you the second key tonight and then tomorrow we'll look at revelations 5 The second key that guarantees your stability, especially at times like this, watch this now, is the power of priesthood. Now, I may not have time to deal with it. I will still touch on it tomorrow. But there is one aspect of priesthood that I want to deal with right now is the ministry of prayer. Listen, let me tell you the truth. If you do not understand the ministry of priesthood especially in these end times you will be a victim 
of casualties there are many people who pray but they do not understand priesthood so they still pray and yet they still get into all kinds of trouble because prayer in our generation has become a ritual that endorses spiritual seriousness and as wonderful as that is there are many other important components to the priesthood ministry even the ministry of prayer that if not captured and understood we can keep dissipating energy and finding pride in the energy we are dissipating in hope that we are gaining ascendance in the spirit only to find out that in the face of real life situations we will fall like a pack of cards. we have to understand the ministry the priesthood ministry hallelujah now please look up the Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 when John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos and he was shown the throne room and began a discussion with the glorified Christ the Bible says we have been made unto our God kings and priests we are going to discuss that I'm going to start with priesthood and then we'll talk about the other aspects because the king priest dimension I will be teaching you is God's prophetic weapon for the end time if you are a priest alone you are going to be in trouble if you are a king alone you are going to be in trouble there has to be that dual combination of priesthood and kingship many believers understand priesthood so they excel as far as their spiritual life is concerned but the cosmos does not experience the dominion power of the Christ because we do not understand the principles of administering kingship this is what the spirit is saying I want to listen carefully and then there are those who focus like in the Bible you know that the first city was built by Cain I hope you know that in your Bible the Bible says that Cain departed from the presence of the Lord and he built a city remember Cain failed in his priesthood but he did not fail in understanding the principles of dominion he built a city and named that city after his son so that even when he's not there he immortalizes his impact using his son those are principles of dominion but as far as offering oblation and sacrifice is concerned he failed now Abel on the other hand did well with priesthood but Abel did not understand kingship and he died many believers understand priesthood so our personal spiritual lives are vibrant but when it has to do with establishing the dominion of Jesus across the spheres of influence to enthrone Christ we do not understand that intelligence and sadly we are not interested but then there are those who are obsessed about establishing the dominion of Christ and they do not know that priesthood foreruns kingship a king does not ordain priests read your Bible it is the priest who doubles as a prophet who enthrones and dethrones kings that means the excellency of your kingship depends on the strength and the quality of your priesthood that is a teaser for tomorrow but for tonight at least to wrap up tonight's teaching we are discussing priesthood prayer is a very important component look up please and it is more than just verbalizing or chanting statements hoping that we will gain ascendance by it we have to understand the ministry of prayer for you to understand the ministry of prayer you have to understand this species of God's creation called man because God does not pray I hope you know that prayer is not for God who will he pray to prayer is for men he spake a parable Luke 18 and verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray so to know whether you should be interested in the prayer ministry or not is not asking whether I am a man of God or I love prayer verify whether you are a man if you are a man then the Bible tells you it is one of the survival strategies it is more than just a basis for receiving petitions are we together now most people have weak prayer lives because they labor in the flesh and the strengthener of anything including your prayer is understanding 
they came to Jesus and they said teach us to pray you are taught to pray hallelujah are we together God never prayed as the word in heaven but when he came to the earth and became a man he subscribed to that law men must pray and then he submitted himself to prayer and since he went to heaven as a man he's still praying God the Father is not praying no but Jesus still prays as a man that ministry it is the one ministry that still remain even as he's seated on the throne he spake a parable please look up to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint now the dual combination of the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer is what gave Jesus stability and stamina to survive the day and to triumph over death hell and the grave in Matthew chapter 4 the Bible says when he was baptized of the Spirit the next thing the Holy Ghost did as he announced Jesus the Bible says he was driven of the Spirit to the wilderness is that true and he prayed and fasted 40 days and 40 nights guess who was waiting for him there isn't that interesting we think arbitrarily that prayer just drives Satan away no read your Bible it was because of Jesus the health of his prayer ministry that Satan left every other thing and came and was waiting there and he was waiting there and as soon as Jesus was done praying the first person he met the conversation after praying and fasting for 40 days was Satan three temptations that represent the temptation that every man must overcome to reign number one is a temptation of individualism and carnality your belly turn this stone to bread take advantage of the power that has been drawn from the place of prayer and use it for your self gratification and Jesus said no power has purpose I have gotten power in the place of prayer but it is not for my belly there is an assignment most people when Satan finds a prayer warrior temptation number one is coming to you turn that stone to bread now that you have gotten miraculous power out of the place of prayer why don't you use it for your personal growth why don't you use it to manipulate somebody so that you can get a jeep and get bread turn this stone there are many people who are turning stones to bread are you understanding the temptation now because you see when you submit yourself to prayer there are many things that happen to you among them your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit is heightened and open that's what the bible says edifying himself the word edify means to expand your faculties of interacting with the realm of the spirit you will sustain an advantage of increased discernment you will sustain an ability to access spiritual power that power dunamis that we got in Acts chapter 1 remember he said you shall receive power is that true in Acts chapter 2 we don't see anything there that is a semblance of power but we see cloven tongues that means there is a relationship between the tongues that came the prayer that was uttered and the power that was promised you see there is a relationship when you begin to submit yourself to prayer among the many things that happen to you is discernment and access your there is liberty that the spirit can find through your faculties to find expression whether to dispense the gifts of the spirit or several operations of the spirit as he wills but then the tempter will come to you temptation number one turn that stone you have the power turn it to bread let the focus of your growth be your personal aggrandizement forget about the kingdom use it to build an empire for yourself and Jesus said it is written you see the power of it is written now if Jesus gave in to that temptation he would have wasted his prayer even though he prayed for 40 days and 40 nights he would have fallen like one who did not pray the strength of prayer is that you have the foundation of the Word of God let me repeat it the strength of prayer is not in the energy that is dissipated it's not in the ritual the strength of prayer is the fact that you are engaging it with respect to the Word of God he said it is written now watch this when he said it is written Satan switched his strategy temptation number two the Bible says he took him to 
high to the holy city is that true the temple and he said fall down and satan to switch he said since i see that you have respect for the word let me use the word too it is written he shall keep his angels charge over you they shall bear you up on their wings this is satan lest thou dash your foot against the stone now you will see the value of prayer prayer gave him discernment because if satan sees that your honor is only to the word he will use it is written and destroy you but the discernment the capacity that you have built in the place of prayer is what guides your dispensing the word is someone understanding now it is written and then the bible says he held him can you imagine satan holding the word who fasted and prayed and he's not shaking and falling read your bible he held him and took him into an exceeding high mountain it's a spiritual location it's not a physical mountain he took him into the bible says from that altitude he showed him the kingdoms of the world and their glory where is that mountain today that you can stand on and see the glories of the world that is the place of exchange where souls are exchanged what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses that is the mountain many have gone there and they have exchanged their soul and they got the world when you read revelations 18 revelations 19 talking about that she goddess that jezebel who fraternizes with the kings of the earth when you see all the things that she sells because she's a businesswoman too is that true yeah she does merchandise and among the many products she sells are slaves and the souls of men she sells anointings ointments she sells slaves and even the souls of men you may ask where did she get it at the place of exchange so satan comes to jesus and says listen i know what you are about or i have an idea of it just bow to me and save yourself this journey of going to the cross and I will give you, I don't need the keys. I don't need authority. I need to use you to make a statement to God. And he rebuked him and said, it is written. Are we together? And the Bible says, Satan left him for a season. So, intelligent people, why did Satan leave Jesus? Not just it is written alone. It was a healthy, intelligent combination of the ministry of the word and the ministry of priesthood of prayer he already began to study the word right from age 12 so why did he go to pray and fast so don't be deceived that just because you are sound in revelation it means the word will work for you no the word without the ministry of prayer is like holding a clock without battery you will keep dangling a beautiful clock and people will wonder and if you hold a clock that is not working it is right two times in a day so you may get something that looks like results but it's, it's a dead clock just enjoying the law of time and chance there are many people who pride on scripture and ignore the ministry of prayer and when they see people praying and fasting giving themselves to prayer they just say, forget those people it's just the word this is the balance when you have it is written without the empowerment of the spirit jesus spent three and a half years mentoring the people on what is written but he says still don't go tarry if you leave with just a, a a salmon you will come back with shock and surprises and while they were waiting there they were not playing they were praying till the holy ghost came are we together the Bible says, as they fasted and they prayed for Paul and Barnabas, the Holy Ghost said unto them, there is a position and a posture you must take to hear him. As they prayed, the Holy Ghost said. As they prayed, the Holy Ghost said. Listen to me. We must fan the ambers of the prayer ministry over the southeast and over Enugu. That men and women will know how to pray, pray down revival, pray down virgin dimensions of the spirit that your territory is yet to experience. Or to pray down restoration of dimensions that have been lost. There are ancient wells that need to be redug again. And that is through the ministry of prayer. Let me wrap up by giving us Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. Never forget this teaching. I want you to go and listen to it again precious people of God if we must survive the times that are coming 
we must give ourselves continually Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 to prayer and to the ministry of the word someone say prayer say the ministry of the word one more time say prayer and the ministry of the word prayer alone ignoring what is written will activate your spiritual senses and you will be alive to the realm of the spirit with no coordinates to guide you into balance any spirit would take advantage of your openness and mislead you through supposed encounters this is what is happening to several people they pray have you seen people who pray and pray and pray until they start behaving psychosomatic and eventually they take them to hospitals and you are wondering what is wrong how can somebody just be praying and praying and praying because prayer you see is a risk you are exploring dimensions in the realm of the spirit you have to send forth the word that has authority both in the realm of the spirit the word must usher you into the realm of the spirit for you to guarantee the stability of your experiences there any spirit is waiting for a willing heart through the sacrifice of dedication to take advantage of you so someone can go respectfully speaking maybe to a prayer mountain nothing wrong with that and pray and suddenly a spirit appears to him and say you are going to start a ministry this is how your ministry will do and he comes down and you study the pattern of that operation and you see that it's an antichrist system the individual is not demonic the individual went to pray and ignored what it is what is written and he met a spirit we have shipped down different extra biblical practices in the body of Christ by sincere and well-intentioned people that are inconsistent and most of them have results but with results they come with various shades of perversion and lead people continually out of the way of the Lord the cure for that is to balance it with it is written and for those who pick up the Bible and say mine is just scripture leave all these prayer people they are just wasting time no it will turn you into a philosopher that does not have power the letter will kill you because you will be puffed up you will be like those the Bible says ever learning and not coming to the knowledge of the truth you will keep saying I know it is written but you will not sustain the grace component to defend the things that you know in the face of real life situation and you yourself will be frustrated he said ye heir not knowing the scripture he was not talking to dull people he was talking to people who had the pentatouch the Torah in their head and yet he said you don't know the scripture hallelujah we must return to this twofold approach ladies and gentlemen if we must experience stability at these end times especially within the southeast let us bring this balance to the apostolic ministry to the prophetic ministry let us bring this balance to any ministry let's bring this balance to business politics that it is the ministry of prayer alongside the ministry of the word that twin combo is what guarantees the sustenance of every believer if at any point in your Christian experience you are found to delve into one exalting it above another as powerful as Jesus is he never called himself prayer he called himself the Word of God so in in order of priority the Word of God must be exalted above any and every spiritual activity prayer listen to me only find its value it finds its value to the degree to which prayer is what compliant and scripture based emotional prayer and prayer that is as a product of whipping up sentiment it may give you a sense of spiritual appeasal but does not carry power in the realm of the spirit but we will give ourselves continually to the prayer the, the prayer and the ministry of the word you are here and you have ignored the prayer ministry simply because you are doing well spiritually or you think you are not a man of God or you think you are not a prophet or an apostle you are walking in error and he lovingly calls you tonight to make readjustments if you want to last and you are here and maybe because of your spiritual experience you are crying in prayer 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 and yet walking in total confusion it is the word of God that makes men wise even unto salvation. Are we together now?
he says and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation but tonight God is calling us to restore these twin forces of the ministry of scripture and the ministry of prayer please rise up on your feet rise up on your feet from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed I one more time from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed just two prayer points tonight and then i speak over your life and we're done let me encourage you um please make a commitment to not miss the remaining sessions that we have we have a session early tomorrow and it's for everyone i believe but i'm going to be teaching um particularly for those in ministry there are things that the lord would want us to know and we'll be sharing together and trusting god to expand our spiritual understanding to the end that we are efficient ambassadors hallelujah so please do well make it a date and then of course as always the night would be a time when i will teach further and then we'll have an opportunity to pray minister to you by the spirit and then you will do well to come with your requests also and we'll pray i trust that god has spoken to us tonight prayer point number one lord i declare in the name of jesus that i exalt the word of god above and beyond any and every spiritual experience around my life go ahead and pray let it be from the depth of your heart more than visions more than prophetic experiences more than signs and tokens in the name of jesus i declare that your word is exalted my confidence as a believer my confidence in this faith work as a man of god is not on the strength of the flesh beyond my visionary experiences beyond the things i have seen and see beyond the things i have heard and hear i submit to the authority and the supremacy of the word of god as the basis for my confidence as the compass by which i navigate through my path in life go ahead and pray let it be from the depth of your heart any and all practices that are inconsistent with that which is written i edit them out of my spiritual experience in the name of jesus the christ of god you are a man of god here pray grace that our pulpits will be Bethel the places of bread where we serve God's people the meal of the word the meal of doctrine with power and with accuracy go ahead and pray I submit myself to the study of the word for in Jesus name we pray hallelujah please listen to me before we pray the second prayer for some of you right now after this session tonight God is calling you you may need to go online and go and download even if it's a Bible study you know guide or template even if it's a devotional guide I know many of us believe we are too matured for devotionals and so our Bible studies have hazard is not line upon line we open anything any day and just because it's the Bible you see you don't grow just because you are opening the Bible it has to be sequentially arranged truth after truth line upon line are we together imagine a student who enters any class any day any faculty any day for five years you can't call that student a graduate he's not a bad student but he's not methodically growing 
is the ability to zoom yourself across a thought line and grow methodically and sequentially are we together now yes so for many of us we need to stop the haphazardness in our spiritual growth you may need to return back to the good old devotionals and don't you think those devotionals are for baby christians no it is pride and ignorance that gives you that information many of our parents only spent like 10 to 20 minutes every day they did it for 30 years and they maintained spiritual stability they probably did not finish the bible as it were but they were sure to make that contact and it was methodical some of us just opened genesis open anything psalms okay the dedication of the temple second chronicles 7 we read two verses while we're sleeping and close it and we don't grow that way we may need to return to order can i tell you the truth discipline is not a gift you have to culture yourself is that true he said i put my body in subjection you have to discipline yourself just help us under the anointing for the excellency of what is before you so there are many of us we need to return especially men of god respectfully speaking we have our time tomorrow but you can't live your life just on listening to sermons and then cherry picking one or two messages no you have to settle down and be stable in the entire understanding of doctrine are we together lopsided spiritual understanding will cost you eventually you need to understand the entire span of scripture what it says you need to understand scripture the number one way to know God as revealed from the Bible is scripture the second way to know God is by studying the names of God the third way to know God in scripture is studying Jesus who is the express image of the invisible God and then the fourth way to know God is through your experiences hallelujah prayer point number two and then we wrap up father fan the flames of prayer in my life fan the flames of prayer in my life as a revelation not a burdensome ritual go ahead and pray restore for many of you this service is a restoration service fan the flames of prayer in my life that I will pray not just as a remedy for affliction that I will pray not just as a platform for receiving petitions and getting requests to be granted to pray as a platform for my transformation and my growth someone pray ask the Lord the Bible declares for everyone that asketh receive it to him that seeketh he will find there are many of you you are the watchmen that God is setting upon the southeast upon Enugu and you must obtain grace from God he said I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower that I will see what he will say to me you cannot afford to fail in the prayer ministry you must know how to tell the spirit and the bride to come for the word to come for revival to come for healing to come someone pray I obtain grace to honor the prayer dimension of my priesthood in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we'll talk a little more about prayer tomorrow but you cannot be efficient in prayer until your prayer life becomes systemic when your prayer life is emotional you cannot grow you have to bind yourself with a systemic approach to prayer are we together now yes the Bible says while Peter and John went to pray at the hour of prayer there has to be a systemic approach to your prayer life with a covenant that is non-emotional father thank you for bringing your word over us tonight thank you for that which you are speaking to us we declare that we have discernment like the sons of Issachar and even as we are in the days that are in the similitude of that of Noah we obtain grace to receive the survival strategies for the time in the name of Jesus Christ that we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of the word and even to prayer as you depart to your homes the Lord bless you 
I decree and declare that tonight will be a night of supernatural encounters for you. In the name of Jesus, the hearing ear, the seeing eye, let it be given to you by the Spirit. For some of you tonight, may God open to you the blueprint of your destiny. And with exactitude and precision, may you begin to find the ancient paths to walk therein. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and see you tomorrow. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotos Koto Brekateka Nekata. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.